welcome back to Keep On Creating. I'm Mike, this is my t-shirt printers. Let's create something. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ding the bell so you know when a fresh episode comes in. And while you're doing all that, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out and allows me to make more of these tutorials. So what happened last week and why wasn't there a video? Well, it was a, uh, let's just say a busy week. Uh, right at the end of it, when I wanted to make the video, I had an emergency customer came in and asked if I could do a photo shoot for them. So I haven't done one of those in a while, but it all went well and I was managed to help them out and get it all done. So I'm pretty happy with that, but something had to give and unfortunately it was the, uh, the video. But on the flip side of it, we got a good tutorial coming on this week and we made it into a magazine. Yes, yes. Images magazine in the UK. Awesome stuff. So what have you got planned today? Well, I've been doing some drawings. So what we're going to be doing here is we've got some text going on in the background here. We've got this light bulb that we're going to be drawing with lightning bolts. So we're going to be drawing that out or sketch. Well, from the sketch, we're going to be putting it into the computer and bring it more to life. We've got some radiuses we're going to be dealing with all in Affinity Designer. Then to finish it off, we're going to be actually putting this light bulb over the text and creating a overlay effect, which is going to be pretty cool. And with all that said, let's head on over to the computer and create this thing. I've got Affinity Designer open here. I'm going to get a new document open. So I'm going to go up here where it says Affinity Designer, go across to file, drop down to new and it pops out a new document window. I've got mine set at 500 by 500 millimeters, 300 DPI. It doesn't mean anything. It's a vector file and CMYK. So let's click create and get our big artboard open here. Now the first thing I always make sure of is that my rulers are switched on. I've had my rulers switched on for so long. I think it's actually remembered it in its uh, preference setting. So to make sure your rulers are turned on, which I'm sure you guys know how to do, let's go up to view and drop down to sh show rulers over here. And that brings up your rulers so that we've got them on our screen. Let's just get a ruler going here. So I'm just click on this little bit over here and drop one in somewhere around the 250 mark, which is halfway. You can really put it anywhere you want on your screen. Everything's just nice and centered for us right at this point in time. So what I'm gonna do is because our shape with our pad we've got on the side here, because our shape is kind of like a rectangle, a bit of a trapeze style rectangle. I have got the radiuses or radii, whatever you want to call them, top and bottom. So I've got some large ones at the top and small ones at the bottom. Let's start there. So let's get our rectangle tool up, which is M or on the left over here, it says a rectangle. That's the tool we're wanting. So click and drag and make a rectangle on your screen. This is that easy and make sure it's nice and centered. So I'm just going to drag it back to our center point there. And you can see how cool it snaps there. Gives me that green line that I know it's centered. So with this, I said we wanted that top radius larger than the bottom radius. We wanted a radius around everything. So I'm going to get up here where it says corner, click on that and click on rounded. And now you can see it's given us those rounded corners. I'm going to push this all the way up to 35 in the setting over here. And you can see it makes everything 35. So there's no individual radius adjustments. Click off the single radius over here. Okay. And this is my top left. This is my top right. This is my bottom left and this is my bottom right. So on the bottom ones, I basically want to take that down to just say 20%. So take that to 20 and 20. Okay, cool. So that, yeah, that'll work. Okay, cool. So I'm zooming again. Okay, so with the shape now selected like this, I need to convert it to curves. And the reason why I have to convert it to curves is because at this point, if I select A, which is my node tool, the only options it's given me right now is this function over here to change my radius. And that's not what I want. I need to adjust this bit. I need to tuck that in a little bit. So to convert to curves, there's actually a button up here that says convert to curves. You can click on that or I'm just going to go command enter and you can, now you can see I've got my nodes. So with my nodes up now, I can start manipulating this a bit better. So I can click and drag over those two nodes over there. Using my keyboard arrows, I'm just gonna slightly nudge that into the right side, so somewhere around there. Okay, that's cool. Now what I also wanna do is I wanna add a point, or two points up here and one point down here, right where that guide goes through the center of my design at the moment. So I'm gonna click over here. You can see it's added a node. I'm going to click up here, exact same so where the cuts off, and then just off to the left hand side, somewhere around about here. That's cool. 
Okay, because basically what, what it is we're trying to create is we've got this little notch right here and I just want to make that little notch. So with that little node selected over there, I'm just going to click and drag that up, keeping it on that guide and just drag it there. Okay, so now one half of this is good, the other half of it, not so good. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to mirror this side and just flip it over. So I'm going to select this node over here, hold shift, and select this node down here. I'm going to go up here where it says action. Okay, click on break curve. Now what that basically does, if I select this side, we can throw that away because it's independent of that side there. Now we need to duplicate this side, flip it over and join it back up. So to do that, we're just going to get our move tool, which is this tool over here or V. I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift, click and drag. There we go. We've got a duplicate of that. Go up here where it's got this little flip icon, flip horizontal, click on it again, drag it back in. Boom, it snaps into place. I'm going to select both of those, hit A. Okay, just drag a marquee over those. Do the opposite of what we just did. So we broke the curve. Now we're going to have to join it back together. So up here where it says action, we're going to click on join curves. And likewise for the bottom, join curves. And now we've got our bulb shape looking exactly the same. The curves the same this side, the curves the same this side. I am looking at this curve and thinking, I think this needs to come in a bit. So I'm actually going to count say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just going to knock them in by ten each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a, just a little tweak. It just looks better to me like that. So why do we have to create this vector graphic this way with creating a graphic a little bit on this side and then flipping it around to make it exactly the same on the other side? Doesn't Affinity Designer have a transform tool? Well, the short answer is no. If you want a more lengthy answer to this, then the answer would be no. Underneath our light bulb, we've got these little, um, what do you call them, little like screw parts. So let's get our, let's get a rounded rectangle tool. Okay. And I'm going to click over here, just, just drag it. Make sure it's nice and centered, somewhere around there. And yeah, let's make it a bit thicker some around there and let's make that corner radius let's really pump up that corner radius yeah that's cool okay let me just drop down a little bit more cool let's make a duplicate of that so exactly how we duplicated it earlier it's gonna click on it hold alt shift click and drag and there we go we've got a duplicate of it I'm just gonna stick two in there for now that should be cool yeah okay so working on the inside of this bulb what we've got we have got a we've got these two little element shapes going on here we've got this like element spiral effect going here which i'm kind of haven't decided how we're going to draw it i think what we can do is just keep all the elements kind of looking the same we'll use these elements here to try and make that effect so let's just get the base of this in first so we've got our rectangle tool i'm going to click and drag that over here okay just make it a black color. I'm just going to flip the stroke and the fill around. Click on that. Take that stroke off. Just going to, using my move tool, I'm just going to move it back in. Now we want to make another one of those underneath. So I'm going to put that round about there. Okay, now I'm going to get my rectangle tool again. So just hitting M, selecting that rectangle tool over there. And let's just draw a rectangle somewhere around there. Make sure it's nice and centered. That's cool. Just flip this around so the fill and the stroke, and let's just make that stroke nice and thick. Okay, so somewhere like around about there ish. Make it really nice and thick. It's probably going to have to come down a little bit. Maybe not. We'll leave it there. Okay, so what we need to do is work with this shape here. So I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift, click and drag. Uh, let's make it over here. Uh, let's make this black. So I'm just going to flip those around, take the stroke off. Okay, and I'm just going to bring it. Let's hold down shift. I'm just going to bring it in here so we know where we're working in this little area right here. Okay, so to make that spiral shape, what we can do, just looking at this zigzaggy type thing I've got going on here that I drew, I'm going to rotate this so you can see that little rotate circle over there. I'm going to click and rotate that just a little bit. I'm going to hold down Alt and shift click and drag to make a duplicate of it so dupe it and let's just flip this around again and just bring it back in so it snaps in there and that could actually work let's just have a look i'm just going to quickly zip through that and just see how it looks yeah that could work cool okay so the only thing i'm thinking here 
is just going to delete that. I'm going to go back here and I'm slightly going to take this back a little bit. So I'm just going to level it off slightly, not too much of an angle. So what angle does it say there? Is it anywhere up there? Nope. Okay, so I'm just setting mine on like a 12, 12 degree, 11.9, 12 degrees, somewhere around there. You need it on 12.1. Okay, so I'm gonna hold down Alt and Shift, click and drag, and I'm gonna flip that over, and I'm just gonna hold Shift and bring it back down until it basically snaps to that point over there, and that gives us that shape there. I'm gonna select this bottom one, select the top one, hold down Alt and Shift, click and drag, all the way up here, and I'm gonna hold down Shift and drag it back in. And so it snaps back to that point over there, which I'm looking for. Now, I'm thinking that could be quite solid as we progress up. So we need to almost break it. So it kind of looks like this element over here is kind of like tucking behind this section over here, tucks behind and then goes up. So what we can do is if I select this rectangle with rounded edges over here, hold on Alt and Shift, click and drag. I'm just gonna drag it to about there. Take a nice chunk out of it. So you somewhere around there, okay? I'm gonna make sure that that's on top. So I'm gonna hold on Alt, Shift, and the close square bracket. You can go over to your layers, and you can see that's right at the top of my layer. So I can't scroll any more up, it's right at the top. I'm gonna to hold on Shift, click this section over here, okay? Go up to this, the punch commands, and I'm just gonna hit Subtract. You can see it's now minus off that little effect. So it's kind of giving the illusion that's going behind that. So with that little piece over here that we've got left, hit A, it's going to click and drag, mark here, all those, select that, and just hit delete. You don't need those pieces. Okay, so hit V, select those two. We could probably come in here, should I tuck that down to there? No, I'm going to leave that just peeking out over there. Okay, so with those two elements selected, I'm going to hit this little plus button here. So add, and I'm going to add those two elements together. Let's make this a different color, so I'm going to hit that there. Let's bring up our colors and let's go red. So we're gonna make this red. We'll change it back to a neutral color later because we're gonna punch all this out anyway. So with this selected, I'm gonna hold on Alt and Shift, click and drag to run about there. Okay, it's just so it covers, it's not snapping to anything. I'm gonna release it. Now I'm just gonna go Command J all the way to, yeah, we'll take it to there. So it just comes out. Maybe we should take it down one. We'll take it to there. Okay, because we can't finish off like that, otherwise it's gonna look a little bit funny. But what we can do is, if I select this one, this one, I'm just holding Shift, okay, everything but the last one, I'm just gonna add them together with our Add function. So that basically becomes one graphic. You can see up here in our curves, it's just one graphic. Okay, I'm gonna select this graphic over here. In fact, let's just drag a marquee over that section there. And just bring them to the front. So those are our little elements that we had over there. Let's just drag them now. Hold down shift and I just made sure it snapped all the way to the top so our elements is now can finish off quite nicely because it's not tucking behind anything now. It's got to end somehow. So we're gonna select that. Not that I'm an electrician or anything. Though I did study electronics at school, weirdly enough. I'm gonna just gonna cut this. I'm gonna go Apple X or Command X. I can delete this one. And then I'm gonna go Command V just to put that back in. Let's just bring this down. So it kind of ends it over there. And there's our filament shape. Now let's just add those two shapes together because currently we've got two sets of them. So we've got that top section and then the rest of it. I'm gonna add them all to one. So now it's one shape. Don't have to worry about all these shapes going on. See how nice and clean we're keeping it on the side over there. Zoom it in. See so when I'm doing big projects, I uh, end up with a million and one curves. Okay, so. With this little section here, I'd like to add just that touch of detail. So I'm going to hold down Command with my, what do you call it, the circle tool, ellipse tool, ellipse tool up. And I'm going to click and drag, whoop, click and drag with Command just from the center. That's cool. Hit V, click off, hit V, and I'm going to pop it right there. So you can see it kind of, it's got somewhere where those little what do you call them, nodes can actually connect to. I'm gonna select this line over here. And should we, I think we should just leave it like that, not get too technical. Let's go ahead and go up to select, nope, go across the layer and go down to expand stroke. 
and click that and you can see it's changing from a stroke to an actual graphic or a full full line over here so it went from a stroke to a, a full line over there i'm going to select all three of these oh, let's just select this element here because i actually want to break this down a little bit because that'll be quite a solid piece over there i'm just going to go and get my rectangle tool okay and just add a little bit more to this let's just do that for now let's make a white just going to bring it to the front okay hold down alt and shift click and drag okay just give it a little bit of yeah that's cool okay so i'm going to select both of those add them together select this big piece of the back over here first of all let's add these all together so add those all these bits here together except for our top big rectangle add those together and now i'm going to take this piece over here that we created and i knock it out of that okay so let's click this minus one with the more selected and you can see just get our node tool up i'm just going to select all of those tuck them back in some around there uh, yeah that's cool gives it a cool little effect there okay so with that i'm going to duplicate this bottom piece over here and i'm going to flip it around that way okay uh, that's cool Okay, let's just move that in a bit up a little bit okay somewhere around there and just make it white oh, that's cool okay yeah i'm thinking just looking at it maybe we need to just skew these a little bit like so delete that one just duplicate this somewhere around there just apple j so we've got a three of them coming down that's cool okay so there's our light bulb at this moment i think that looks pretty cool okay so with that is our light bulb we've got to add the lighting bolts to this so we're gonna just zoom in here just make some lighting bolts so i've just got my pen tool up which is this tool over here and i'm gonna click over here click over here click down here click over here let's go back to run right over here there and let's close it off so you can see we've got that tiny little dot there i know that i'm closing it off and let's just manipulate the nodes on this thing just make a more lightning bolt ish okay somewhere around there somewhere around there that's cool I'll select it again and let's just make it our gray color very dark gray um so we're gonna need one here and hold on alt and shift click and drag flip this over put it there down here maybe flip that one back to that side rotate it all the way around okay do the same on this side just alt drag flip bring it back in and there we go okay so that is kind of our effect there what i want to do is i'm just going to click all of that i'm going to drag it and i'm going to put it up here i'm going to hold down alt and shift click and drag all of that put it over here okay um i'm not going to combine the lightning bolts with this graphic at the moment what i want to do though is let's get my pointer tool up which is uh, this tool my selection tool move tool select all of these elements here i'm going to add them together then i'm going to punch it through this bit over here so you guessed it we're going to hit this minus or the subtract button over here and now that is just one element hold down shift select all three of those with our bulb add them all together now that's one graphic i haven't joined these at the moment because we may need to reposition those little three lightning bolts but we've still got one element over here that we can come back to we can mess around with and we've got one that we can just take into our graphic when we need to okay so the next stage of this is we have to get our text on here so now how i've done it i've got our word creating and i've worked out that creating is made out of eight letters so we can go four and four and the keep on we can pop on the top so let's get our text tool up which is t so it's your artistic text tool and just type in creating okay uh, make that nice and big now we've got to select a good font for this so i don't want it to be too straightforward like you see quite a lot of i just want this to be a bit more like everything vintagey so let's choose we'll go for hoverage i think 
coverage and that does a nice sort of a nice tall font we can use so we can use a lot of space which i'm looking for and it's got a cool vintage effect to it so we've got this font over here now what how i actually worked it out is we've got that four letters and four letters so the cree and then is going to sit on top of the ting so c-r-e-a it's going to sit above the t-i-n-g so we can just go ahead and just drop this down there like so and you can see basically the the a extends past the g so what we need to do is first of all i need to convert this to curve so click on that little button up here or command enter and it's now curves so what i can do is if i ungroup this command shift g okay that's ungrouped i can click here and i can drag this up a little bit just click all this here i'm going to bring that in i'm going to bring these in a little bit here just to try bring in a little bit closer to this ting and then because i don't want this ting to be too much bigger when i size up justify so holding shift and dragging it's going to snap it right to there so it's nicely aligned to my right nicely aligned to my left and that's what i'm looking for there it's going to group that all together and just pop it right there in the center now i need my other text at the top so i'm going to hit t again get my artistic text tool up click I need keep on okay select all of that just command a let's get that hoverage up again i'm going to make this the solid version because the smaller detail in this won't work if we try and make it uh vintage and you'll see what i mean if i take this effect unless we've actually got this vintage effect somewhere and we can make it all consistent if i had to make this the vintage effect you can see how small that effect is and it just doesn't gel very well so i'm just going to keep it nice and solid there convert that to curves and just bring it in just to the edge of this this line here so i want to take it to there okay that's cool and then take it to there that's cool right there okay oh, we don't need more text i'm just going to use my move tool bring it up there okay so all of that uh let's group them all to group all of that together so that's one big group there now let's bring in our light bulb okay so let's bring this version in here i'm going to bring in a copy of this so i'm going to hold down alt okay and just drag in this down here could actually work pretty cool off to the side of our take that what's going on here get my move tool take out these lightning bolts can bring that into the side there Ooh, that could even work okay but it's not what we're going for you know what we'll save that for later and um what we can do now is if i select our keep on bit okay and let's make this what color should we make it let's make this blue nice blue color okay blue and this red always kind of work together and funny enough when we when i first started my first brand i was told by a another printer before i started printing our own stuff that blue print on a red shirt it's the worst decision you can make well the first event i did it was the most basic print i did and that blue print on that red shirt i sold the most of those things should have bought more anyway so going back to this on this fill section we're going to make this red make sure there's no stroke on it although there's not but i just take it off that's a little bit of a glitch they got going there i'm going to click this and drag it in make sure it snaps to that center line i'm going to hold down shift and and command just make it nice and scaled down nicely i'm going to bring that to the front so command shift close bracket enter bring it to the front now i want this to have that cool like overlay type of effect okay so i'm just going to bring in my lightning bolt and let's make that red as well so click on that red uh, not the stroke take the stroke off okay so i want to have this to have the overlay effect so i'm just going to hold on shift and select both of those if we head up here to our layers palette you can see this is opacity 100 percent that's right but it says normal next to it so if you click on this normal and go multiply you can see what it does it actually gives that overlay type effect and i think even if you do the overlay effect it kind of gives you the opposite kind of, where it overlaps on the blue it oversaturates or desaturates that kind of area but we are looking for this multiply effect and it gives it that cool like knockout style of effect there and that is pretty cool i'm loving that okay let's add another lightning bolt on this side so just alt dragging let's rotate it 
it's just up there love how it just goes from that white and it overlaps there a bit that's cool oh, pointer tool v move tool okay and just rotate that yeah that's cool hey wow let's delete that lightning bolt turn off our rulers and there is our cool finish effect now we can obviously color this up in any way which way we want the only other thing we could probably add to this is just like a little like um stamp or something just to finish it off so we can go to our shapes and let's go to our should we do a, a star just change the star to like four points yeah something like that can we round these off so take those just ever so slightly do that I suppose we could have made this eight points for what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy paste and just going to rotate this around here. Yeah, like that. Okay. Pointer tool. Put those together. Just add them up. And I'm going to put them over here. Just off center so it doesn't look too bad. Get my text tool up. Just type in 2020. Okay, 2020 like that. And we want that hoverage again. Hoverage. So the hoverage doesn't have a forward slash. It sucks, but anyway. Uh, just make that white. Okay, convert that to your outlines. Come on, enter. Okay, I'm just gonna ungroup that. I'm actually just gonna use the 120 for this. I'm just really riffing this up here. Okay, just put that in there. I'm going to rotate that slightly off centered from that so it's not quite the same. Bring it up a little bit. That's cool. Okay, add those graphics together. Hold shift, select your star, punch it through. Get your opacity up on your layers palette and just hit multiply. Okay, I would say that possibly. Is our finished graphic yes came out pretty super cool so i'm pretty happy with how it came out and this again could go on to a t-shirt and look really good to finish your merchandise off hope you enjoyed this video make sure to follow us on our social channels all listed over here below and thanks again for all the comments and the new subscribers welcome aboard it's great to have you and with all that said if you haven't subscribed yet don't forget to subscribe smash the like button and i'll catch you on the next one I'm out of here.